you folks know, we're all about being prepared here on the Hillbilly Jim AM radio show. And we ain't just talking well armed either. You need food, you need shelter, you need water. Sometimes you need gas. You gotta have a way to make this stuff. A little bit of moonshine never hurt nobody either. But just saying, you need it all. And each one of these problems that we deal with, each one of these things, well, it presents a different sort of problem. So we're going to talk about what's going on right now because I think of all the things we usually talk to, a lot of these things are hypothetical. They're not real. It just kind of things that we dream up in our head might actually happen. And sometimes you have things that are realistic, like hurricanes and floods and that kind of thing, and you don't want to rely on the government to come save you. But right now, we got something really going on. Most of these officials are saying it's sick, ill, but unlike any viral spread we ever heard before, it don't look like no flu to me. My friends are saying ghouls, wretches, monsters, even that Z word, but since we can't say that, we've been calling them Zacks. But what they are is really dead people. They got back up and started walking around. Now, I keep hearing about all these officials saying we ain't supposed to worry about it. But I just feel like we should because that's what we do here. And I don't see it getting any smaller. I don't see this going away. I see all them promises they made to us and I'm telling you a lot of times them promises just fall right through. So if you ain't ready for these situations, you just ain't ready. And so we have points of reference here that we can go by and say, look here, Georgia. What you ain't hearing is a complete lockdown right now. You go to that border and you see what happens. You're going to get some questions. You're going to get some people stopping you in the traffic. They're going to get some uh, illegal search and seizures maybe. Some uh, definite questions that ain't on the border. So you get asked these questions and I'm sure these questions have a lot to do with are you sick? Are you feeling ill? And it's very interesting to have something like that happen. So some cities you can't even get into. So Atlanta it's all locked up and I'm pretty sure that might be coming to some other town near you. So like we always say here it's time to be prepared. So the first we got to know a couple of things if we're going to be ready. First, what we're up against, and honestly, we ain't got a whole hell of a lot of information. We know they're slow, and we know they're tedious. I think they get stuck sometimes looking up in the sky or to the ground, and I don't think their vision is all that good. So it's possible they attack sound, or maybe even movement. Some were saying it was heat, but I'm not buying that at all. Noise, I think, would probably be a big part of it, but we don't know. See, you just gotta assume that it's a mix of things. What I know is humans don't use smell, so I don't think there's much of a chance of us relying on any smell-type things going on. And since we don't see it any other time, I don't think it's gonna be much to worry about. It's odd thinking about how humans hunt, though. But I'd say it's something you have to keep in mind when you're talking about this stuff. You have to really think like yourself. What if you didn't have the ability to dial up a phone or search on the internet or talk to a couple of friends about where you're going to go? I think that's something that these things think about. I think they think this is where the people are. This is where they ought to go. So we are watch and listen type of animal when it comes down to it. So once we get to the point of where we're about to do whatever hunting ground we're going to deal with, that's what we use is that watch and listen. And when these things attack, they don't use weapons in the traditional sense, but they try to grab and they try to bite. So it's kind of showing some sort of a lack of intelligence. And not like your Uncle Buck's lack of intelligence either. I'm talking about real low-level stuff that's very animalistic. And the funny thing is, is I ain't heard this from anywhere. 
Ain't no CDC or civil defense ever come on the radio and told me any of this stuff. So that's the thing is, is you're getting it here first. So the first thing we got to do if we're going to defend ourselves here is going to be simple. Keeping silent, limiting available movement, or at least your visible movement. If you have a fence, a solid one, not something you're going to look through like a chain link or any of that kind of thing. If you got that available, you're doing pretty well. But I think that's simply your first line of defense. Stuff that would stop thieves like little razor wire or thorn bushes, that kind of stuff I think deters people. But I don't think it's going to slow something down like this. I'm not sure they really feel pain or have any kind of removed response from the injuries we've seen on some of these it didn't really slow them down all that much if not at all but it's got to be sturdy so whatever you have it's you might have to make sure that it's something that somebody couldn't break through now, we've seen some examples of these things breaking or heard of examples of these things breaking out of morgues and things like that so if they can get out of something like a heavy door then you got to make sure they don't know to come through whatever wall that you have available and if you do have a wall you gotta make sure that it's sturdy enough that if they do that it ain't gonna break and if not just do whatever you gotta do to sturdy that boy up well if they can break anything weak we gotta not make it weak the other thing is don't give them a target and I doubt they'll do much just other than standing around like statues or walking to wherever they think is appropriate. I think this is a good opportunity those that say bites are easily avoided and they don't need any sort of armor or equipment. I don't think you understand quite how the human mouth works. If you want to know what kind of force a human mouth can generate, I want you to put an M&M &M between your fingers and try to crush that sucker. I'm telling you, it ain't going to be kind to you, but you put that thing in your mouth and you'll crack it open like a chestnut. It, I mean, if you're going out, you got to think armored. A lot of people were saying heavier mail and some of that football equipment, but I'm telling you one thing, it ever always made us work good, especially working in those husky environments. And I like chain mail. It's slick, it's quick, it's not that heavy. It's not thick like leather either, so you can put stuff over top of it. It's not very restrictive. Now, I think of all the options you got out there, that's probably the best one you got. I mean, obviously, you got to figure out those most vulnerable parts and feet, so you keep that in mind. But I, I'd say if you got something like a leather jacket and that's all you got, I think that's pretty good. You just got to make sure that's got nice, thick leather because you don't want nothing thin. Because I don't think it's going to stop as much as you think it's going to stop. Also, most of these things, they go for the face. So I think the biggest problem is is using something like a helmet or having a helmet available to deal with it. And I think that pretty much be the defense you need. And before you go off running out of your house looking like a linebacker from the Green Bay Packers, make sure you need to. This ain't happening everywhere. And no one or two of these things ain't gonna do much to you. You can probably fight them off if you need to. But I'm just saying that we're here because this is what happens. And as always, our job is to get you prepared when it does. So let's move along now. Now, if you're like me, and you have some more, M M if you have more MREs in the US military, then you're probably in a good place. But what you probably don't have already is a garden. And that's what you know you're gonna need to be getting done because you're gonna have to have food at some point. See, unlike most of these other problems that we run into, Unless you're living in the city, you probably don't have to pack up a go bag and bug out. You can survive at your place of residence. So if you live on a farm, you're probably already where you need to be. You just need to wall that sucker up, which I'm hoping you've done just because you needed to in general. And unfortunately, that scarecrow might work against you making all that noise and attracting all that attention. But you'll have to cross that bridge when you get there. So until then, just live life as normal but the truth is is that if you don't have all that stuff you're going to need it and you're also going to need to figure out how where it's going to come from in the future so plant a garden getting a food source 
thinking about things like water and make sure if you have a water source to protect those water sources from any kind of contamination especially everything that has food you might be able to gather food but water might always be an issue so you got to make sure those areas stay clean and clear of anything you're going to deal with I mean it's pretty simple if you think about it food out there happens naturally so if you can make it happen naturally you're in a good place and sure if you're living in the city maybe it's time to head out but remember if you've been doing your work then you'll know when to bug out and if you do it right you can drive out places like Atlanta that's a little bit different that's probably a little bit too late to think about that now but other places you got to look at it you got to know what to look at look for especially police activity elevated responses news response things like that have your scanner on and listen to what them voices say on there and it'll tell you when it's time to get that bug out bag ready to go and don't be caught unaware either because even if you're asleep in the middle of the night you'd be amazed at how things bad can go come 3 a.m. on till 6 so always be ready and that's the theme of our time is being prepared so I know you may not be a big fan of your relatives maybe you have some friends out there that ain't been friends with you for a while but if you have some living in the country maybe it's time to head out to their place and you know go over with their numbers because remember there are power in numbers so the more people you have together remember to sell that idea to people let them know you know you get together and you become a better force than you are by yourself I've been talking to these militia guys and the ex-military and they're already starting to take action and gather and crazy enough that government's been mobilizing against them what a shock huh something I'd never had said 30 years ago but here we are I don't think that should stop anybody though the idea of getting together and supporting a group that's well, it's just the American way. You don't need to be a militia to get the boys together and protect your friends and your family. But you focus on that food and water instead of in, in just digging in and walling up. You got yourself a place of residence. And the thing is, the more people are there, the stronger you're going to be. But if you have a well laid out plan and you already have the group you know you're going to be with, you're going to be leaps and bounds ahead of everybody else especially if you got something out in the middle of nowhere that nobody knows about them are the places that's going to be holding up for a long time so I know you're probably worried about this stuff but right now what's the worst thing you can do when it comes to SHTF moments this is actually low on the totem pole and completely capable of surviving outside of making sure the bad guys don't get in and making sure nobody gets sick gets in and you'll be doing pretty good and see that's the thing is is most of these events we talk about are pretty or darn epic I mean just short of a comet hitting the planet earth there's pretty much nothing out there that's out we don't really realize we can try to survive but they're usually pretty big and encompassing and things that really do break the bank and the truth is, is, yeah, this may feel like a big thing, but when it comes to lava moving across a place, if it moves real slow, you can get really ahead of it. And what I found is the biggest problem right now is people aren't getting ahead of it. So if you can't count on them, you're going to have to count on yourself. If you stored up the food to make the time to set up shop, the timing right now couldn't be better. But back to the big thing at hand again. I'm all about being well. This is a civil defense warning. If you live or work in the Fulton County area, you are currently suffering from a power and communication issue. All those affected are instructed to shelter in place until further notice. Only return to work if you are an essential worker. Essential workers are considered health care and infrastructure, such as communication and power. All others, you are instructed to shelter in place until further notice. Do not enter Fulton County or report to a shelter within Fulton County without direct advisement from Civil Defense or the Board of Health. Do not contact emergency services unless absolutely necessary. Thank you for cooperating with these instructions.
We now return you to your original broadcast. So in other words, if you're cutting firewood, you can't use that same thing to kill a Zack and then go back and cut your food up or put it into the wood you're going to burn and then breathe it later. Because that's the thing is we really don't know how this is spread. You just got to quarantine your tools now and clean them up, which I think is important. Have your two sets, one for fighting and one for eating, and that's the way it's going to work. And we always talk about stealth camping, and that I think that goes doubly so here. So while we're trying to find a camp, remember, we don't know how these things track. So leaving nothing in your way is the name of the game. Covering your sit won't hurt none either, even if you don't know for sure that their noses are a big deal. Like I said, we don't want that bear hunting us down, so we might as well just play all the cards while we got them. And someone asks you to stop. And I say, stop when you're going to stop for good. And keep moving if you ain't. Just wait for that homestead to show up. And I pretty much think that those places are going to be abundant if you need them. But otherwise, if you can stay home, really, staying home is probably the best bet. Just make sure you're walled up and you got yourself a good place. And you should do okay. Like I said, I think these things really kind of look at the hunting ground that they're going to deal in. So I think the biggest problem you're going to have a problem with is going to be with those relatives that know where you live. So the trick is, is making sure that all your friends and all your family and everybody is all in one place so you can take a good handle on what everybody's doing. And lastly, there are things that I just tell people we don't know. The higher, the better. The vantage point for where you're looking onto everybody is just key to everything you're ever going to do. So if you're going to be there, be as high in the air as you can. We don't know if colder climates are appropriate either, but if I was a betting man, I'd say colder is better and hot is faster. Any place you can sustain meat is a bonus, so salt is a big deal. I'm just going to say it like that, which is most important. Avoid the scraps. Any kind of fight you got, take it someplace else. Remember, if you need a doctor, you already failed. If you need a splint or a repair, you all slowed down, you in trouble. So the best way to keep out of trouble is to avoid the trouble. But be ready if it finds you. Some of you stock guys out there know how to scope out other people and learn from them. So use those skills. If you have someone that's able to stalk in your troop, you already have a leg up. Ain't everybody friendly, and if they ain't, then it's time to move on. But don't be so quick to connect with those that are. Factions are going to be important along with teams and numbers. So work those friendships if you can, because those supply lines are going to play a big key role in what happens in the future. Remember, together, even if we're apart, we play a role in defense and supporting each other. This is going to be a different kind of fight than any kind of ever preparedness that you've ever taught anybody. So the point is, is being prepared. So once you know who is coming to help you, that's when the problems occur the greatest. But dead weight, that's going to slow you down. Remember to offload those SIDs. In the coming world, you're going to be judged by your usefulness. So remember, keep your friends close, your enemies closer, and always be prepared. I want to talk more, but that's really all the time we got for today. So remember, being prepared is survival. Survival is getting you another day. Cover up, stay stealthy. We'll see you on the flip side.